Midwave contest. Look at Lucian. Just look at Lucian. Look at him. Like, just look at his movement. Take into account there's a Senna W on the minions, okay? And he dodges the Senna W. Look at his spacing. Are you kidding? Look, he's dashing into his ear. He's basically saying to them, if you do not dash on me right now, you're going to die. And look at his dodge on the Senna W. Just look at his, where his, his champion is. He's like space gliding the Senna W. Dashes onto Azir's head. Azir's like, fuck this, I'm flashing on him. Insta flashes it. Now look at Viego's like, okay, maybe I can follow up on that. Insta, insta, insta cleanses the Viego stun. Just look at him. And now he's frying Viego. Like, what is that Lucian doing? He's 1v5ing them. And now you watch the whole thing in real time and you're like, how the fuck? Is he scripting? Like, like, his teammates are just cameramen. In the 2024 Spring LPL Grand Finals, Elk had perhaps the most insane Lucian performance ever. He was constantly playing aggressive, daring Cream to engage on him with Azir. And when top esports tried to punish him, he always guilt tricked them with his insane mechanics. In this video, I will compare this hyper-aggressive playstyle that Eastern Lucians demonstrate in the LPL and LCK, and compare that with Western Lucian gameplay in the LCS and LEC. Specifically, I will examine Lucian games in patch 14.1 when Lucian was highly contested in all regions due to the double support item meta. On patch 14.1, Lucian saw a huge pick ban presence in all leagues except the LEC. And in the games that Lucian was picked, only the LPL and LCK saw high win rates. In the West, Lucian was 1 in 12 in wins and losses. Let's also examine the use of Bloodsong, First Strike, and Ignite in these games. We see that this hyper aggressive build was widely adopted in the LPL and LCK and very fringe in the LEC. While these differences in builds may explain the disparity in win rates, there are many more in-game decisions that determine whether a Lucian wins or loses a game. Notably, Eastern Lucians create tension to find opportunities to catch their opponents out mid-game, while Western Lucians tend to play passively and get outscaled. Let's dive right in and analyze these key moments. In the LPL, teams would play around Lucian immediately from level 1. In this game, Sin Zhao is deliberately skipping camps so that RNG's bot lane can be denied farm and XP. Maokai is called to save his bot lane, as minions die one by one to the tower. And even after Maokai arrives, RNG still can't farm safely because Lucian and Nami are both level 3 to Zaya Rakan's level 1. As a result, RNG is checkmated, simply having no access to their tower. We see Weibo tank minion aggro to stay out of turret range. And in spite of these minions, RNG still don't want to fight. Even with a TP to save RNG, ZDZ manages to interrupt the TP, and Maokai falls. As Zaya and Rakan escape under their tower, they are eventually dove, leaving both of them still at level 1. When BLG faced RNG, they also showed no mercy. RNG's bot lane is already behind levels from an early death, and thus the 3v3 with both junglers present is still in favor of BLG. Knight is also first to rotate bot, cornering and slowly chipping away at RNG's health bars. BLG poke and juggle aggro so well, it is hard to watch without feeling bad for RNG. But this is the LPL. This is regular Lucian gameplay. Vi gets his trade kill on Kindred, but she also gives her life to Lucian, further snowballing the ADC gap. And in the LCK, T1 is also not afraid to go for early bot lane dives with Lucian. Now let's take a look at how Eastern Lucian's team fight. Because Lucian lacks the consistent DPS other AD carries offer, Skirmishes or chaotic fights is where Lucian thrives. In this teamfight, JDG is letting NIP set up at Elder, 
so that Flandre's Udyr can flank. When Udyr makes contact with the NIP, Ruler unleashes the culling on Rookie, forcing him to retreat with Azir E. This relieves any pressure of an Azir shuffle. For the rest of the fight, Udyr is creating space and chaos so that NIP carries cannot slowly peel like they want to. Ruler gets an aggressive RFC empowered Lucian passive on Rookie, which forces NIP to base and concede Elder. In this dragon fight, notice how Guma Yushi's Lucian is keeping his distance from Dragon and the enemy team. The moment Vi uses Q to reposition in the river, Faker pulls the trigger and uses Quirky Package on Kwandong Freak's isolated bot lane. Guma then follows up and gets a double kill. This was never a front to back team fight, and T1 recognized the need to find picks with Lucian. Guma then collapses on the rest of Kwandong Freak's and gets a triple kill on LeBlanc. On the other hand, if Eastern Lucians cannot find a pick, they will actively avoid taking a front to back fight. In this clip, FPX concede Dragon because they did not find a pick. Fighting would mean fighting front to back against Zeri Lulu, which is very tough. So instead, FPX trade Dragon for mid outer, top inner, and mid inner turret. That's three turrets for a dragon. This play maintains the tension on the map since FPX are pressuring Ultra Prime to quickly finish Dragon so that they can respond to the pressure on their turrets. Tension is also generated through Vision Denial, which has been made easier on patch 14.1 because Lucian also has Bloodsong to place wards. In the downtime between objectives, Lucian teams often execute a deny heavy playstyle, controlling the enemy jungle at the expense of skipping their own camps. The constant tension greatly increases opportunities for picks, since their opponents will have to take more risks to contest farm and vision. Once teams have built up substantial tension, this tension can be cashed in through sudden picks. This usually happens when the enemy team has no choice but to risk their lives to contest objectives like Baron or Dragon. In this clip, BLG is threatening Baron, but Elk Solution is not in the pit hitting Baron. Even when Wei is clearing a control ward far from Baron, BLG immediately punish and kill him. With the enemy jungler gone, BLG cashes in on their tension again by cleanly securing Baron. In this T1 Gen G match, Guma is on Lucian, and again, he is not hitting Baron, but threatening to engage on the enemy team if they contest Baron. However, T1 instantly switches gear and makes the call to have Guma DPS Baron. This is because they believe Genji is too far to arrive in time at Baron. We see that Guma even uses calling on Baron, indicating that T1 is on the same page to quickly finish Baron and get out. This is another way to cash in on tension. Simply take the objective if your opponents are too cautious. And in their match against KT, T1 execute their trademark strategy of starting Baron at 20 minutes. They believe KT's vision is greatly starved, and they believe the tension they have created will lead to ample opportunities to make plays. As Karia makes contact with Piosik, Guma is called off Baron to look for aggressive picks on KT. In fact, all of T1 pull off Baron. But Piosik is so convinced that T1 is close to finishing Baron that he face checks the bush and gets bursted down by Guma. T1 makes KT look stupid by picking Piosik, Deft, and Perfect off one by one. But remember, this fight was never fair to begin with. The tension generated by denying vision at Baron was so much that Piosik thought that he had no choice but to face check. And who did he face check into? All of T1. They were not even close to finishing Baron like he thought they were. While tension generated by vision denial is possible with any team comp, 
What Lucian does better than any other ADC is generating tension just by existing. When the map state seems to be stable, Lucian can unleash a culling that catches the enemy ADC unaware, chunking them or even killing them. Here are several clips of Lucian's creating massive tension with aggressive cullings in the LPL and LCK. And in this clip, Ruler repeatedly goes aggressive on Caitlyn, and solo kills her after the third attempt. Now let's take a look at how LCS and LEC teams played around Lucian. In this match, Shopify Rebellion looked to invade Team Liquid's blue buff. However, notice how little tension they are working with. Team Liquid's mid outer turret is still up, and Impact, Poor JJ, and Umti are all rotating in anticipation of Shopify's invade. Umti makes contact with Boogie, and he spots Wild Turtle above him, indicating that this fight has a front to back setup. This is unfavorable for Lucian and Zeri Lulu now feels safe to back up Poppy. Although Wild Turtle kills Umti, Lucian is not built to kill tanks, and he finds himself overextended. The rest of Team Liquid is now in position to punish Lucian. In this skirmish, Shopify never quite had enough tension to make substantial plays, and they overextended onto Poppy and are punished for it. In Shopify Rebellion vs FlyQuest, Wild Turtle has the right idea of jumping on FlyQuest's backline. Insanity gets a great Zack engage on Jensen, and Wild Turtle then runs rampant over FlyQuest's backline. However, the outcome of this fight was largely due to FlyQuest's tanks not setting up properly. FlyQuest has a front to back comp, and Whipple was flanking instead of making space and getting vision of key Shopify threats. Later the same game however, FlyQuest pulled it together, and were able to out-teamfight Shopify. Look at how desperate Lucian tries to make burst plays. He just can't chew through the shields and healing on FlyQuest. Deciding to commit to a front-to-back teamfight is certainly a mistake on Shopify. Many Eastern teams would look instead to cross-map and take towers in this situation. In this clip, we see that Lucian's calling gets no value. Cabochard also TPs for a dive mid lane. As KC's wave crashes into G2's turret, nobody pulls a trigger in this 5v3 situation. Without a play, KC is bleeding gold on both side lanes, since G2 is still farming. In this clip, Vitality lacks any tension to make plays with Lucian. Instead, they are a ramming an E to multi main knockup from Poppy followed by a great hostile takeover from Renata. This clean front to back layering of CC results in a massive teamfight win for Fnatic. Lucian gets little to no value in teamfights like this. This fight allowed Fnatic to get a free bearing. In this fight, Lucian starts with a high value culling onto Consante. Gragas also gets a knockback on Aphelios with his ult, resulting in a pick for KC. Akali is pushing bot, and instead of maintaining tension by starting Baron in this 5v3 situation, Cabochard plays it safe and TPs to the bot and hip turret. Furthermore, Azir looks for a play and shuffles Xin Zhao back, burning his GA. And when Xin Zhao revives, he flashes to safety. Casey can use this opportunity to turn on Baron, but Jax burns his flash and fails to kill Xin Zhao. All of these decisions, the TP bot, the Azir shuffle, and Jax's flash, they are all attempts to cash in Casey's tension, but fail to amount to any advantages. If an Eastern team were to be in this position, they would all land on Baron and trust that they can turn on Fnatic or prevent the Baron steal with an Azir shuffle. 
This would also put pressure on Akali to TP to Baron instead of the other way around. And in spite of all the unsuccessful plays I mentioned earlier, KC still goes for a Baron attempt. But they cashed in all of their tension earlier, and are now missing key cooldowns and members. This play is now pure desperation, and it can end horribly wrong. No one on KC is in position to prevent the steal. Additionally, Gragas now has to prevent a calling from TPing to Baron and dies for it. And Cassante just walks up to Jax and ults him out of the Baron pit, just as Xin Zhao jumps into the pit. And clearly, this leads to a Baron steal for Fnatic. What started with such a promising pick with Lucian ended up with a series of play not to lose decisions that conceded tension back to Fnatic. This is not only how to not play Lucian, it is also not how to play League of Legends. I mentioned earlier in the video that there was only one Western Lucian win on patch 14.1, and it was an SK vs Vitality. SK exhibited a lot of gameplay found in the LPL and LCK, such as early dives, aggressive chunks, and maintaining tension with vision denial. Lucian throws an isolated calling onto Aphelios, while the rest of the team maintains vision in Vitality's jungle. And when Baron is up, Vitality is unsure if Lucian is camping for a pick or helping his team kill Baron. And when Vitality gets nervous and face checks the Baron bush, Exekick is there to punish them. And with this tension, SK gets a clean Baron without any contest from Vitality. Throughout the rest of the spring split, Bloodsong Lucian fell out of favor, and Western teams stopped picking Lucian altogether. But just like BLG, T1 and Gen G both prioritized Lucian in the LCK Grand Finals on patch 14.6. As MSI is right around the corner, we will have to wait and see how much priority the attending teams have on Lucian, and whether Western teams can deal with the tension Eastern teams are so good at creating. If you like analytical content like this, please hit the like and subscribe button for more. I am so excited for MSI 2024 and hope to make videos as MSI unfolds. See you in the next one.